All right, hello everybody. Welcome into the channel. My name is Haku. So today I wanted to go over and explain all of the different roles or classes. I think roles are the official, official name for it, that occur in the Sunless Zone Zero. And what do I mean? I mean, Nekomata is an attacker, for example. So as of right now, we have attacker, anomaly. Stunner, Defender, and Support. But what's the difference? Also, his name is Plut, and he's begging for a treat. So let, let's bribe him to be quiet for a bit. Okay, Plut, I'm gonna give you one, then I'm gonna need you to shush a little bit. How about that? You wanna say hello to, say hello to YouTube? Hey, YouTube. Ah, there we go. There you go, he's a good boy, he just turned 14. So, we have five classes. Now, you might have played Settle Zone and played with these different classes and kind of felt like, hey, it, it kind of feels like they're doing the same thing. They go bonk bonk on the enemy. But there is actually a key difference. So I thought, let's be very basic, and I first I read through the official description for them. Then we take it from there. So, for attackers. Agents with the attack specialty possesses formidable damage output capabilities, excelling at rapidly racking up damage directly through attacks to defeat enemies and bring the combat to a swift end. Basically, they are good at one thing, and that's doing damage. They quite often have higher attack, they quite often have innate crit rate and crit damage that levels up with them. So they are your bread and butter like damage dealers. And quite often, or in almost all cases, you pick your damage dealer and then you build your team around that. So you pick whichever damage dealer you feel like is your favorite, that you love the playstyle of, and then you build it surrounding that. For example, in my ne Nekomata team, I run Nekomata, I run Lucy, Sorry, that's Lucy, and I run Piper. So attacker, super good at doing damage, and should be almost like the main, the core of the team, and then you build around them. Then you have stun. Stunish. All right, Pilot, you got one. That's enough. Actually, you had an entire bag today. That's enough. Fish now. So here we have Kolida. She's a stunner. And now you might have noticed while fighting enemies that they have a bar that fills up on... They have a... <laughs> Pillow it. I'm recording here. I'm recording. No, shut up now. I <laughs> don't be quiet. <laughs> I'm recording, Pillow it. I'm recording. Behave. You're old. Act like it. Act like you're old. Shush now. No, they can't. Hi. All right. Uh, you have stunners. You might have noticed when fighting enemies that they have a bar underneath their HP bar that fills up, and that's kind of their stun bar or their break bar. Now, stunners are really, really freaking good at, at uh, building up this bar and kind of breaking or stunning the enemy. Agents with the stun specialty possesses powerful control abilities, excelling at building up days to cause enemies to be stunned, thus creating opportunities for the squad to deal damage. Now, stunning an enemy is a very, very freaking good because that lowers their defenses overall, but above everything else, it allows every like basically every attack that hits a stunned enemy pilot that's enough every attack that hits a stunned enemy will trigger a chance for your other team your other characters to do assists assist follow-ups so you know when you <laughs> you want to test my hammer Sh should i just re-record re this entire video i'm not sure how much i'm picking Picking him up. <laughs> Pilot, 
I'll put you in the living room. Shut up now. I love you, boy. But shut up now. Nu räcker det. Uh, where were we? Oh ja. Yeah. Any or most of all of the attacks you do on a stun enemy will trigger a chance for a... Will trigger a chance for a assisted follow-up to happen. Where... Hey, don't look down on me. Where another character comes in and like do their... Uh, the switch in move. So a stunner is a very very powerful and good unit to have on your team because it really like once the enemy is stunned that's when that's when the real damage happens so to say. The stunners are very very good at that and should be a staple in most teams. Then we have one of the weirdest uh, classes which is anomaly. Agents with the Anomaly specialty are exceptional with applying debuffs, excelling at accumulating Anomaly buildup to weaken enemies and deal damage by triggering Attribute Anomalies. So, an Attribute uh, Anomaly is when, uh, depending on which attribute, so Grace is electric, when she has done enough electric damage on an enemy, they will suffer from shock, which is the status effect they get when they when an enemy has suffered too much electric damage they become shocked and grace herself she has certain abilities that or she has certain things in her kit that makes her do more damage the more shocked enemies are, are on the field now there are other anomaly characters like piper who is a physical anomaly character so anomaly basically means that one they put some sort of debuff on the enemy. Usually it's like shredding their defense or something something like that. And they are very, very good at building up whichever element they are associated to. For Piper, that's physical. And when an enemy has been dealt enough physical damage, they suffer from assault, it's called. And you have characters who scale off how many enemies get gets assaulted, like Nekomata. So anomaly characters are they debuff the enemy and they are very very good at building up whichever element that they are having an anomaly on the team is also very very freaking good then we have support and support agents with the support specialty are able to aid and enhance other agents in battle excelling at buffing friendly units to improve the combat effectiveness of the whole squad now support Kind of simple, kind of simple. Just as it stated, they have stuff that makes their allies stronger. So, what Rina does, for example, is that she passes on pen ratio to her teams. So the more penetration, the more penetration stats you have on her, the more she passes that on to her fel her fellow teammates. She also buffs her fellow teammates shock damage. So she's, she's good in any team, but she's exceptionally good in electric teams, if that makes sense. One, two, is it work time? Another is example of that is so another example of that is Sokka. She increases everybody's attack, uh, but she also increases everybody's ice damage done. Which she works in every team, because every team wants damage. But some of her buffs and kits goes wasted if she's not paired in an ice team. Now, the last one we have, and we only have one in the game currently, and that's Ben, is defense. Agents with the defense special, they have a strong survivability, excelling at tanking attacks to counterattack, counter seizing the upper hand for the side in the heat of battle. So, basically, they are tanks. Uh, ben, he, he shows this by scaling of defense, for example. So, the more defense he has, the higher attack he has. And he's also very good at like absorbing hits. Uh, and he also gives his teammates a shield. So, as of right now, I don't feel like this game really needs a, like a defense character. But mind you, we're all we're all still very much like leveling up. Maybe the higher content coming down the road is gonna like require more 
more survivability on the teams and i think then defense characters are gonna come in come more into play as of right now the best tactic to get through anything is just burst it down as quick as possible so yeah those are the five different classes that exist in the game you have your attacker which is your main dps you have your stunner which is good at making the enemy stunned so which enables more attacks you have anomaly which is super good at building up uh, whichever element they are and also debuffing the enemies you have the support and something i didn't touch upon with the support is that the support is actually both the support and the stunner and in some ways the defense as well a lot of their moves will will trigger and follow up assist from a teammate so a lot of the supports and anomalies moves will actually allow you to or like incentivize you to switch out characters it's like they know that they are not supposed to be the star of the team and a lot of like a lot of their moves like arenas uh, special attack for example a quick assist is triggered when this skill hits an enemy like you will see the in all in this in almost every support when their skill hits an enemy a quick assist will trigger and you switch out character One, two, because they yes. they are meant all to come in do their debuffs or debuffs and then yeet out and leave place for the start of the show which is usually like the main dps like ellen Tasha, like nekomata like grace etc that's enough from you now <laughs> but you're so cute so yes nice and easy i just want quick wonder to pop in give a little breakdown what does every what does every role do in the game and i hope i hope he wasn't too intrusive and i think he's earned himself a piece of candy now i was gonna give you this to you if you were good you've been very bad this video you wanna say goodbye to YouTube? Ah, you can kill it. You're a menace, Pelut. You're a menace. <laughs> All right. I think that's a nice way to end the video. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I I hope I cleared some things up regarding the regarding the classes. And until next time, goodbye.